Boy, wouldn't that be some news for some of y'all out there? Oh, Lord. Now, what would you do if someone gave you that news? Would y'all just go out there and live and say, well, I'm going to die anyway. Just go out there and eat up everything? <laughs> Spin every dime you got? What'd you say, Corey? Yeah, no. <laughs> hey, hey. You know, I don't know, Lord. I know. You just, I'm sorry. <laughs> My, me and the Lord talk all the time, but this, this is something that just popped in my head. Do y'all know people just eat wrong? People just eat wrong. Check this out. They eat wrong. They'll eat black-eyed peas. Yeah, that. Cornbread. Greens. They got ham hocks in it. Whatever type of meat you want to throw in there. Macaroni and cheese. Mashed potatoes with gravy. And then wash it down with a Diet Coke. I even saw on Facebook, somebody said, y'all got all that food on there. This is the food that y'all say, Lord, bless it. Let it be nourishment to my body. When this is the food that'll kill you. Because y'all know, come on now. Y'all know macaroni and cheese ain't good if y'all don't put no butter in it. I know the macaroni and cheese I like ain't going to be good. Come on, first lady. How many cheeses you put in your macaroni? She put five or six in her macaroni and cheese. Come on, help me, somebody. As I preach this word, just thinking about it, I'm looking forward to Thanksgiving so much. Somebody said Thanksgiving was just their favorite holiday. I understand. <laughs> Set your house in order. Because your days are numbered. What would you do with the time that you have? Would you try to win a soul for Jesus Christ? Would you, this is the last days. Is it, is it time? Because right now it is the last days, y'all. What you doing out there? You out there having fun like the rest of everybody else? Or are you trying to get yourself together? Are you getting your house in order? It says here, set your house in order for you shall die and not live. That's what the prophet Isaiah told Hezekiah. Second verse says, then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord. Whenever you get news like that, it's time to pray. Because we don't serve a God of death like them people about to celebrate Tuesday. We don't celebrate Halloween. At least I don't. And then now that they're trying to call it Holy Ween. Now, we ain't going to Halloween it. We're going to Holy Ween it. The devil is a lie. The day of the dead, people want to celebrate. Why do you want to celebrate the dead? Didn't Jesus say, let the dead bury the dead? <laughs> when you didn't understand what was going on, because I'm going to tell you straight up, back in the day, I'm not going to even lie, I was one of them ones, when little children, was out there, trick or tree. We didn't know no better. You study and do your homework now, you realize when Halloween is, is, is so demonistic. I even saw an atheist that said, do you know that the atheist that is, is this man that used to be the pastor of a, of a satanic church that now is a Christian that said that the satanic people look forward to Halloween and they sit there and they call us hypocrites because we out there celebrating the day of the dead. They looking at us calling us hypocrites. And y'all know y'all Christians, y'all know it. Some of y'all got pumpkins in front of y'all house right now. <laughs> no, I ain't going to check your house out. <laughs> it's important for us right now. Yes, we can have a good time, but it just don't have to be on Halloween. I like to have a good time with the children. Like I saw last Sunday. Last Sunday when Halloween. They had a wonderful time. Look forward to just having it. And then I found a, a, a friend, of y'all know uh, Minister James Lewis, who I always have come here and preach for me every now and then. He gave me a, a, another place where uh, they have those blow-up things where you can hook yourself up to it and then run and get some balls in the middle. I mean, it's like, it was like the bouncy house type of thing. I mean, gave me two phone numbers. So I'm like, Lord, we're just going to have to do it again. You know me, Ms. Brown. Hold my checkbook, will you? 
Because first lady, she got it. She ain't gonna let me buy, she ain't gonna let me spend nothing. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to God. Beloved, it's time to turn our face to the wall and talk to the Lord. Here I am again, Lord. Yeah, standing, sitting, kneeling, wailing, calling on your righteous name. I need you. You know my situation. See, that's how I am. When this serious business, I'm talking to the Lord for real. I don't have time to say, oh, our Father in heaven, the Father of the heaven and the earth. When it's time for serious business, I say, now, come on now, Lord. Come on now. I'm your child. You made me. You created this. I'm in pain. I remember I was diagnosed with valley fever, and I didn't know what was going on in my body, and it was tearing me up. I didn't know. My family was there. They'll tell you. It was tearing me apart on the inside. I didn't know what was happening. Didn't have time to say, oh, Father in heaven. I said, come on now, Lord. Come on now. I don't know what's going on in this body, but you made this body. I know you can heal me. Anybody know Jesus is a healer? I know you can heal me. There's no doubt in my mind. I remember uh, Dane even told me a couple weeks ago his son touched something hot. And then he said he was looking around the house for something. And then all of a sudden he was looking for some medicine. And then he, it clicked in. I do got some medicine. He said, As soon as he called on that name, he said the next day, Dayla was fine. I'm telling you, there's power in the name of Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. If I didn't say nothing else, that's enough right there. Third verse says, Hezekiah says, and said, remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart. And have done what is good in your sight. Anybody always try to do that? Huh? So that prayer is for you. When you talk to the Lord, I try to do the best I can for you. Yeah, it went over somebody's head. <laughs> and I have done what is good in your sight. And then Hezekiah wept bitterly. Mmm. A man crying bitterly. Any man ever cried so hard that you couldn't cry no more? Come on, look around. Look at them hands. We men, too. Heterosexual men. Man in and man out. Ain't nothing feminine in this body. And I wept bitterly one day. I was like, Popeye, that's all I could stand. I can't stand no more. And then while I was crying, see, I'm one of those ones that have, I cry so hard it puts me to sleep. That's when the Lord takes over. I let the Lord take over because when I wake up, so much is gone. It's so much has been released. Whatever was wrong before I went to sleep. Come on now, talk to me. I hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The hand of God was just all. That's what he does to me. He knows me. He made me. He created me. He shaped and formed me in his likeness, in his image. He did the same thing for you. So when things happen and you don't understand what's happening, just get it out. I'm getting it out. It don't make me no less a man to cry. The Bible says God honors our tears. He sees it. He honors it. Go to sleep and he just takes care of me right there. I wake up and I'm a new man because I feel like one. And then I get up about my business. Fourth verse says, and the word of the Lord came to Isaiah the prophet again, saying, go tell Hezekiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. Beloved, I came by to tell you whoever's been praying, sister, tell her 
God heard her prayer. Whoever's been praying, the Lord wanted me to tell you, he heard your prayer. Y'all know what y'all been praying for. Mm. Yeah. I have seen your tears, the Lord told Hezekiah. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. Yeah, the Lord want to add some years to your life. The Lord wants to grow you. He wants to nurture you. It's some things he wants you to do. He's going to use you to do it. Glory to God. Six verse says, I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria and will defend this city. I'm talking about add Assyria and put Arizona right there. The Lord will defend us, y'all. He's going to take care of us. Beloved, aren't you glad we served a God of another chance? Yeah. Glory to God. Romans 3.23 say, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Beloved, even when we mess up, we serve a God who after we repent, that's the first thing we got to do. Lord, I'm sorry. Anybody had a disciplined parent like my mama Adela? Boy, whoo, anybody had a disciplined parent? You can go to her when you do wrong and then you say with all your heart because you know you knew better, Mama, I'm so sorry. Or, or well, see, I couldn't say daddy, so I'm going to say that for y'all that got a daddy. Daddy, I'm so sorry. And mama just loved on me. But you know what my mama told me? Yeah, 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 I, I accept your apology, but I'm going to tear your little butt up. <laughs> because you know better. Only one time, y'all, I can remember, as God is my witness, only one time I remember I didn't get whipped. Boy, I got to tell y'all this story. Do you know I got caught smoking cigarettes? Adela. You know, I have, y'all come on now. Y'all should know the story about Adela by now. If y'all had a mama like Adela, y'all wouldn't do nothing wrong. But I was a boy. I was always doing something I had no business doing. My God, I thank God I'll serve a God of another chance. Mama, say, don't stick your hand in that outlet, boy. You don't get electrocuted. <laughs> After the fact, I was the first, hey, I was the first moonwalker. <laughs> Mama caught me smoking cigarettes. I'm going to tell you where. We had a convention downtown Chicago. It was the Chicago National Baptist convention she caught me smoking cigarettes in the hotel room at church y'all laughing y'all know how old i was i ain't get to that part you want to take a guess how old i was who said 10 who said 11 who said 12 who said 13 10 come on back in the day come on y'all Y'all know back in the day, the cigarettes was right there at the counter. They didn't have it behind the counter. They had it right there, Lucky Strikes. Pop, popped it back to my brother. He put it in his pocket. Come on now. We talking about church folks. That's why I'm telling y'all, y'all can fool man. You can't fool God. You can't fool me either. Because I know what you're doing. I know when you're out there smoking weed. I know when you're out there smoking. I know when you're out there drinking. You know why? Because I did it. I know what I look like. I know what my breath was like. I see you. <laughs> then I used to get mad. I said, Lord, how in the world would you, would you allow me to go through all that stuff? And you know I shouldn't have been doing all that stuff. He said, that's why. Because you can see who's doing it. And they think they getting away with it. Yeah, I'm not getting away with it. I was the best at what I did until God one day shaped me and molded me and made me. Back to my story. I ain't going to forget the story, y'all. I was 10 years old, had a cigarette in my pocket. You know, when you're 10 years old, you ain't thinking. You don't think. 
You ain't got no Monica. I always got gum, and everybody, anybody ever knew y'all want some gum right now? See Monica, she got some in her purse right now, for everybody, for real. I ain't even know what these was back then, and if I did, I ain't had no money to go buy none. Here I am, rather steal cigarettes, Miss Brown, instead of stealing peppermint. I ain't want no peppermint. I went back there, me and my brother were down in there. And back during the day, it, it wasn't on no smoking signs. You could smoke anywhere back in the 70s. Anywhere. All in your clothes, all in your hair. I finished smoking. Wash my hands, thinking I got away with doing something. Washing my hands. Get back up in the convention center. My mama was sitting in front of me. I was sitting behind. And I said, Mama. Yeah, I did. Ten years old. One thinking. I just want her to know I was back. Oh, she knew I was back, all right, because this is what she did. Wait a minute. Blow your breath in my face again. <laughs> On the inside, y'all ever seen where somebody uh, uh, was thinking about something, and you see this big explosion? Boom! <laughs> That's what they show on the inside. My whole inside just exploded. Because I said, ooh, mama going to tear me up. <laughs> I should have smoked the whole pack. <laughs> you know how it is when you do wrong. You say, oh, I might as well go on out and do the rest now. That's what was going on with me. At 10 years old. Check this out. 10 years old. I was hurting in my heart so bad, not because I smoked, not because I got caught, but because I let my mama down. I disappointed my mama. I said, Mama, I'm, when she got home, I said, Mama, I'm so sorry. I mean, I had my hand on my heart, too, so she must have known I was meant that. I'm so sorry, Mama, I'll never smoke again. 1984, I picked it up again. Yeah, Lord have mercy. First lady will tell you, Lord have mercy. She wouldn't even give me no sugar, y'all. That's why it took 10 years for us to have the other baby. <laughs> Look at Damon. He, Damon even got a kick out of that one. But do you know I did not get a whooping that day? But my brother got his behind tore off. Because he walking around like he ain't did nothing wrong. He ain't said I'm sorry to nobody. See, that's Mama's baby. See, Mama always baby Lionel, my brother. Lionel thought he was going to get away with that. Mama told Lionel behind up that day. I said, Lord, I thank you <laughs> that my prayers were answered. <laughs> yeah. But that was something that I, it just hit me. I, that's the only time I got out of getting a whooping. But even then, it's back to Romans 3.23. We all sin and fell short of the glory of God. Don't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Some of us are going through stuff with our children right now. See, my mama wasn't playing. The, the issue I had with my mama, she was so overprotective of me, she wouldn't let me do nothing. I couldn't go nowhere. I couldn't go no sock hop. Lorraine about to go to a, what are you going to, a dance? Was it Wednesday or Thursday? She going to a dance with Thursday. She got, she got boy crushes, y'all. I told her, do not ask them nothing. Let them come to you. That's the way it is. That's the way it is in this house. That's the way it's always going to be. The man pursued the woman. You start them off when they're young. When they get old, you ain't going to go after them. They're going to come to you. And then I'm going to have the final say. Because if they come down with their pants hanging down here, I'm going to look at the door and through the peephole. I'm going to say, man, don't come in here. <laughs> and if you think I'm kidding, come to my house. You did that? Good. Good. That's what I'm talking about. That is a responsible dad. How dare you? You showing me how you are. You mean to tell me you would rather somebody come down and show your behind to everybody in the world before they show it to you? See, I could talk like that because they're children in the back. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be real raw now.
No, see, Loren, Loren knows better. That's my daughter, see. I talk to my daughter like that now. You train them up in the way they should go, that when they're old, they won't depart from it. I told her he to find a wife find a good thing, not he who finds a husband. That's how I, she'll be 12 in December, as tall as she is. I'm teaching that to her now. No, no, you, you will respect me. Did y'all see on the news last week when the, when the daughter, boyfriend, killed the dad out in Tonopah? I had told my daughter that, be careful, because I'm telling her at 11, she's beautiful. Somebody going to want her, and it better be the right one. I said, do you know that your decision will make the difference whether I live or die? Because either he going to kill me, or I'm going to kill him, one or the other. I would rather you have someone that first know Jesus. Amen. Two, got a relationship with him. Three, is respectful. Yeah. Let's start right there. Them three right there. I can work with you then. Yeah. I can work with that. Four, know how to dress and know how to act. Yeah. It will take you a long way in life. If I had a business and someone walk up in there with some jeans with holes in it, I'm not hiring you. It's the principle of the thing. I'm so old school, y'all. It is ridiculous. My daughter asked me one time. She says, Dad, is that girl playing football? I said, yeah. What you think about that? I said, I'd rather not see it. She say, so sexist. That's my 11-year-old daughter I'm talking about. But I love that type of dialogue, because you know what? I came back at her. You know I had to answer for everything. At least I tried to with her. Come on now, the 10s, 11-year-olds, you got to have an answer for them. Come on. My answer to her was, why you got to label me? Why do I have to have a label? How come I can't look out for the females? Why would I want to see a female play a ruthless sport like that? Why would I want to see a beautiful female take a football and run and somebody just tackle them to no end? And they, they first good hit, they're going to get a concussion. Why would I want to see that? I said, so don't label me. I said, I just like the homosexuals. They say, because I don't agree with their lifestyle, you hate. Don't label me. I don't hate you. I love you. I love you. I hate the sin. Your lifestyle is your business. You see what I'm saying? So don't put no label on it. Tell your neighbor, don't label me. That's what I'm saying. It's not the fact that I'm labeling you. I just old school. I saw a movie that's coming out with Denzel. They showed the previews where there was this lady standing up in the back and the man sitting down and the young man asked, hey, would you like my seat? She said, why? That would have been my response. Well, like, hey, would you like to have my seat? Come on, have my seat. Nowadays, Oprah got everybody messed up. Where, hey, I don't have to sit down. You stay there. Back in the old school, when I was in high school on the buses, when I used to see our elderly, I used to get up and let them have my seat. It was, it's, and to that day, to this day, I'm that way. To this day, it'll be 25 years for me and First Lady next month. Do you know I still open the door for that woman? And I open the door for Loren too, because I want her. I'm teaching her. Ladies, I hope y'all hear me. That's the type of man you want. And if you're standing there, and they getting in the car, and you standing at there, and you still waiting on them, you need to be saying, what am I doing with this dude? He more concerned about himself. That's being selfish. I hope I said something that will bless y'all with that today. Because of all of that, because of what you see in me today, you're looking at someone that God gave another chance to over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes, all have sinned and fall short of his glory, but each and every day of my life, I do everything I can to do the right thing in God's sight. I want him to get the glory. I want his light to shine through me. I just don't want my head to be just shining. I want the light of Jesus Christ to shine so that y'all can see Jesus Christ in me. In everything I do, in everything I say, how I walk, how I talk, how I treat my fellow man. And the church said, amen. amen. So, so the, this, this story here of Hezekiah is, is, is powerful. Beloved, even when we mess up, we serve a God who after we repent, his grace kicks in. And we are allowed to get another chance because he gives us one. My sisters and my brothers, I praise God for giving me another chance. Amen. Glory to God. My life was a mess. Yes, my life was a mess. He told me to do one thing, and I did something else. Uh, but I praise God, he gave me another chance. Beloved, if, I, if God gave you another chance, what would you do with it? If God gave you another chance, what would you do with it? Mm, some of us would mess it up. Uh, some of you would say, if, if only I had a second chance, I wouldn't have married who I married. Meaning you would marry that one person you think would make you happy. Instead of God already putting that thing together. Instead of you working that thing out. Because God put it together. Glory to God. If only I had a second chance, I wouldn't have moved here. Meaning you would still be in California, Indiana, Chicago, Mississippi, Michigan, Alabama, New York, Jamaica, Virgin Islands, or wherever else y'all from. Don't y'all know y'all are here because God ordained you all to be here? There's work that needs to be done in the valley. So let God use you in the valley. If only I had a second chance, I would have finished school. It's never too late to go back. I've seen 80 and 90 year olds walk across the stage. It's always a chance. Don't ever allow the devil to mess you up, to make you think it's too late. Tell your neighbor, it's not too late with God. Yeah. If only I had a second chance, I wouldn't have gotten involved in the things that I was involved in. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. God is not only the God of second chances. He is the God of another chance over and over and over again. Glory to God. This is good news because some of us, beloved, mess up the second chance real fast. One of the amazing things of God's character is his incredible patience with us. Psalms 86, 15 says it well, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Micah 7, 18 says, who is a God like you? Pardoning, pardoning, pardoning is what I want to say, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance he does not retain his anger forever that's what i love about god he does not retain his anger forever glory to god because he delights in steadfast love beloved god loves us with a steadfast or an everlasting love if you will that can never be broken. When he made you, it was love at first sight. When God made us, it was love at first sight. Forget about what you did. Don't let the enemy keep on playing what you did in your head over and over again. Forget about yesterday. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is another day. Tell your neighbor, today is another day. I'm through. I'm through. The word of God, beloved, is full of people who receive second chances and even third and fourth chances. Remember, remember Adam? Got another chance. Remember Jacob? Remember Jonah? Remember Samson? Remember the woman that was caught in the act of adultery? What did Jesus tell her? Go and sin no more. Mm. Glory to God. What about Rahab? Anybody remember the harlot Rahab? I love that story. And not only was the whole family saved, 
her line, her bloodline lines right up to Jesus. She was a prostitute. 3,000 years ago, that was not considered an honorable profession. To make matters even worse, she was a Gentile who lived in the city of Jericho in the land of Canaan at the time when the nation of Israel was about to conquer the land. But this Gentile woman, full of ill repute, had heard about the God of Israel. Glory to God. And his greatness. So when spies from Israel showed up at her house, she put her life on the line to hide them. Glory to God. When God is in the plan, you do some things and you don't even realize why you're doing it. And by the time everything is over, everything will work out for your good. God granted her another chance. When Jericho was completely destroyed, only Rahab and her family, Corey said, completely destroyed. Uh, 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 when when, when uh, Rahab and her family uh, 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 was in Jericho and, and Jericho was completely destroyed, her family survived the destruction. Even more amazing is the fact that we find Rahab's name in the Matthew genealogy of Jesus Christ. And so, beloved, I'm here to tell you today, we know Moses got other chances too. You know, there's other people in the Bible that had other chances. I'm here to let you know today, I'm finished, that we serve a God, that when we mess up, don't think, oh my God, it's so destructive. We serve a God that will give you a chance if you let him. If you let him. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and look to the hills from which cometh your help. All of my help comes from the Lord. Don't think you messed up so devastatingly, just, just so devastating. Oh, God, I can't come back. Here's a good one. When Samson messed up, when he cut off all his hair, come on now, if, he, if it was y'all and God told y'all not to cut your hair off and, and you allowed Delilah to cut your hair off, Come on, surely I know Samson had in his heart. There's no way God will show up on, on my behalf again. But it's one thing to think on your fleshly side, but it's another thing to think, that's right, on your spiritual side. When your spiritual side kick in, you'll start talking to the Lord again. And Samson started talking to the Lord again. Even though they took out his eyes, he didn't know his hair was growing back. And God heard his prayer. And he got his strength back. And he killed more people blind than he did with eyes. Because God gave him another chance. God will give you another chance. Anybody, anybody ever had a job and all of a sudden the job just fell through? And y'all just fell so out of it like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I've been in that boat. You know what I did? After I did that? I like that, because that's what I did. I had to. After I wept bitterly, and I fell asleep in that office, I woke up and talked to the Lord about it. He didn't do it right away, but he did it. He did it five years later. That's grace. That's how my grace period was five years. He gave me five years to get myself together and allow things to move. So he was wondering, what you going to do while you waiting five years? So I went and got an internet radio station and got on the internet and played internet gospel 24-7. So when the local thing kicked in, all I had to do was take my computer and put it there. Turn it on. 24-7. Faith without works is dead. Let your faith do the work. Let God get the glory. Keep on allowing the Lord to use you after you repent. God will give you another chance. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I praise God for this opportunity, Lord, oh, 
to call on your righteous and holy name for letting us know during this hour that it doesn't matter what we did. You can take little and make much out of it. No matter what we did, after we, re we repent, you can take a mess and make a message out of it. You've done it for me. You've done it for me. Here I was, a, a wretch undone. And now, you're using me for your glory. To tell a dying world that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God our Father. To tell a dying world that if we would confess our sins, that Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Have your way, Lord, in this place. Continue to grow us, Lord, and nurture us. Continue to equip us with everything we need to win the souls for Jesus Christ. For you said in your word, the he that wins the soul is wise. Continue to use us for your glory. Bless our young people in the back, Lord. Cover and keep them even right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord, in our lives. We'll praise your name forevermore. Thank you for hearing the prayers of your people, Lord. Thank you for adding years to their lives, years to their vision, years to their destiny. In the name of Jesus, we'll praise your name forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. The church said amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to hide some of my messages from my mother, cause I know she she she'll trip if she see me tell y'all some of the stuff that I went through. I'll be like, no, mama, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. But I praise God for you, beloved. There may be one that wants to make Greater Faith Christian Church your home. This opportunity is for you right now. As we continue with our worship experience, this is the best place to be, Greater Faith Christian Church. We are lovers up in here. We love you. We love God. And we love everything as it relates to Jesus Christ. Come on, brother. My brother. You got, you got, your, you got your bodyguard with you. This my... This, Come on in. Come on in. Come, come on, man. Stand right here, up here, John. This is my brother, John. He came. He, we feel bad for him because because he wasn't feeling well last week. Corey told him, that's all right. He ate enough for us both. I did. I did. I had to do my heart. <laughs> John, tell everybody where you're originally from. Uh, here. Born and raised? No, born in Memphis. Born in Memphis. And most of your life here. Yeah. God is good. Department of Corrections. Yeah. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. He's a God of another chance, isn't he? Yeah. You can relate. Yeah. yeah. You know I can feel you, man. <laughs> let, me, hey. let, let me tell you something about this man. He won't, but this is a mighty Come man of God right here. Come on. This man knows scripture. He prays. Hey, I'm honored to call him my brother and my friend. And yeah. He won't say it, so I will. That's all right. He ain't saying it now, but I bet you'll start saying it. He keep on hanging with us. He going to be so relaxed around us that he'll be one. Can I talk? Come on, man. Uh, oh, you feeling the brother? Oh, we know each other. Uh-huh. They've been friends for 10 months. Yeah. Yeah, we waiting on you too, Kimya. And your wife. Y'all want to join and be a family member? Y'all, this time for y'all too. Y'all want to make it official. This time, anybody else that want to make Greater Faith Christian Church your home. You hear, look, see, I told you, he's speaking now. He's saying, what you say? You Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, bring, hey, you leave, don't, don't leave, don't leave your better half. Come on up here. Yeah. Don't leave your better half. My main man. Hey, man, sister, sister, I get a chance to hug you again. Come on. What'd he say? No, he did. He said, you stay here. No, no, that's all right. But no, I'm saying, come here. He said, stay here. I said, come here. Uh-oh. Amen. 
Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Beautiful people, and how long y'all been knowing each other? For years, huh? Yeah, cool, cool. Y'all know we serve a God of another chance, right? No, uh, it's, it's, it's been kind of rough, uh, but at the same time, us individuals, we made our mistakes, and uh, the law punishes for it, and uh, we find ourselves free now, free to do the Lord's work, and that's what we're here to do. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Come on, come here. Productive parts of society, not even like just doing okay, like doing exceptional. Oh, got their own business owner working 105 hours a week. His boss says, Let me do this for you. What can I do for you? A million dollar boss telling him what he can do for him. Come on now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. We serve an awesome God, don't we? We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Don't you forget that. Yes, you heard me from 10 on. Yeah, I did some things I'm not, not pleased with telling you, but I always ask the Lord why I had to go through that because I get a chance to minister to those that went through that. And I say, if the Lord can get me out of it, he can get you out of it too. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I love y'all. I do. I fell in love with y'all before y'all joined, really. And uh, y'all got a good spirit about yourself. But see, I get to get to know you even more. What, what type of gift do you do? Can you sing? No. <laughs> no. Me neither. We'll find something for you to do so the Lord can, can use you for his glory, all right? Come on. As, as the pastor of this church, we welcome you with open arms. Let the Lord use y'all for his glory, amen? Right. Come on, y'all. Let's welcome him in. Excuse me, sister. Bless you, man. Come on. Let's fellowship. Greater faith.
Amen. Amen. Come on. God is so good, isn't he? Amen. Don't forget, y'all, that God, who's rich in mercy, even when we mess up, he's right there waiting on us. Don't feel bad, because see, life is too short now to be feeling sorry for yourself. That's what the devil wants to do in these last and evil days. He's trying to trip you up and make you feel sorry for yourself. Say, so, oh, well, I already messed up. I might as well go on out there and do something I ain't got no business doing. No, 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 no. I want you to realize who you are and whose you are in Christ Jesus. And when you mess up, say, oh, Lord, I messed up again. But the Bible says that uh, your mercies are new every morning. He gives you a chance every day. If you mess up today, like, mm, I messed up, Lord, I thank you for the day that you have made. I messed up, Lord, but I'm sorry. Lord, give me good sleep tonight so tomorrow when I get up, I can do it all over again and do it right this time in Jesus' name. That's the mindset we got to have starting right now, okay? That's the mindset we got to have. It's time out for mess. It's time out for, for, for dis distractions. It's time, everything negative, it's time out for. That's right, just let it go. Yeah, yeah, I think about Tyrus' the son in South Korea. I told my mom about Tyrus' the son. She even started praying on the phone for your son in South Korea. See, they not just going over there to South Korea just to do drill instructions. It's time to pray. If my people, that scripture verse means something to me. You know, people, you hear it all the time, but don't nobody want to use it. If my people will, that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong in office. That's what's wrong with 45. He's not humble. You got to humble yourself and pray and seek his face. And then will we hear from heaven then he'll heal our sick then he'll heal our land yeah that's what we have to do don't forget to humble yourself first you can't come to the lord with all that pride because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall you know jesus wants you to humble yourself like jesus did for us when he died on the cross amen I digress. Mm. Let's raise our offerings so we'll be on our way home. Amen. Come on, man. Let's raise our offerings so we'll be on our way home. Glory to God. I praise God for our praise dance. Hey, sweet. Are you awake now? She all right now because she laughing. Jai, sir, bless you. It's a pleasure to have you come and worship with us on the day. All of our guests is here. God bless you all. Oh, your son is here? Miss Brown's son is here. Maybe she should have a birthday every day. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? You remember me? Oh, you remember? Cool. My main man. Good. Good to see you. Glory to God. Miss Brown's son is here. Glory to God. Yeah, God wants you too, man. That's why you're up on the front row, so you can just feel this anointing. Feel the anointing. Glory to God. Anybody need an envelope? Raise your hands quickly. Say, who played football Friday? Who the football player over there? How many touchdowns you had Friday? How many touchdowns have you had all year? Man, you had to think about it. That many, huh? I hear you good, man. I, I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to seeing you. Who you play for? Central? Okay, cool. Because we, we got a brother here. He's a, are you a junior? We got a brother here, Jacob. He's also a junior. For he, he's with Copper Canyon. So uh, we got to get y'all hooked up where um, y'all can meet. And, and, and that brother, Minister Mario, told me about an idea he had. We're going to talk about that later for these young men, too. Just want to do some programs since we got enough room. Y'all see it. As it, it, it. If it comes to life, let it come to life and check it out. But uh, hey, we got all the land. Might as well take good advantage of it, huh? Okay, you ready? There you go. Let me pray right quick while y'all looking. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, for Father God, for another opportunity to give back to you that which you have given us. You said in your word, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. Will men give to our bosom? 
according to Luke 6.38. Then, Lord, you showed us how to give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for you love cheerful givers. Thank you, Lord, that there are cheerful givers in this room right now. It's because of you, Lord, we are blessed. It's because of you, Lord, we're able to give. And we thank you, Lord, for your bountiful blessings. Now, Father God, again, we, we lift up those that want to give and at this time don't have to give. We ask that you will bless them, Lord, today, that they will be a blessing to someone else in the name of Jesus. And we'll praise your name forevermore. Let them know, Lord, it was you that blessed them in Jesus' name. And we'll praise your name and glorify it forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Church said amen. Amen. Father, we come before you on this hour. Thank you for this day of fellowship. Father God, we thank you for those that have given, those that had to give, and those that didn't have had the heart to give. We pray the blessings over them, oh Father God. And Lord, we continue to pray and ask you to bless us to be good stewards over what you have provided for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you all. Um, the Smiths are here. Mom and Dad Smith. The parents of Brother Brandon Smith, our, our organist, we praise God. Y'all snuck in on us again. God bless you all. And to our guests that snuck in on us this morning, bless you, brother. Tell about your name. Maurice. Maurice. And who is this? What's your name? Josiah. Jo Josiah. Josiah. We want to hear the names over here. Come on now. Josiah. And Janice. Janice. And who is the little mama? Who, little, who is the little man? I'm sorry. Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence. Are y'all in, where you all originally from? Uh, California, Compton. California? Yeah. Okay. Compton, you say? Yeah. Oh, you feel you were Compton, huh? Oh, yeah. Straight out of Compton was right up your alley, right? <laughs> <laughs> you in the neighborhood? Uh, right here, right here. Cool, cool. So don't be a stranger, man. This is where we are. Come on, let's praise God for our guest this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Let's keep the young family continue to lift up in prayer. As soon as we get information, we'll share that information with you all regarding the home going of her son. Amen? Amen. All right, come on. Uh, did I leave somebody out? I don't want to leave you out. Come on, let's go home. Thank you, my pastor. Good morning, everybody. Oh, my, my, my. This one's a little bit weak, but I'm going to strengthen you now by the word of God. All that the pastor has been saying this morning, it is wrapped up in one verse. St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, because God saw us so messed up, 
that there was no relationship between us and him. He has to do what is right in his sight. He took the initiative and he gave us the best gift that he has. His son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, when you hear the word Emmanuel, it means that God be with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something now. God in his mercy has given us the Lord Jesus Christ as a gift. God told us that if we give our life to him through Jesus Christ, we'll have eternal life. Now, here's where the robber meets the road. God has done his responsibility towards us already. Our responsibility is now. What are you going to do about it? Are we going to walk on the gifts? Please bow your heads with me. Oh Lord, the mighty God, the God of love, the God of a second chance, a thousand chances. Unto you, O oh Lord, be glory, majesty. Unto you be honor. For you, Lord, are the great I am. Lord, we thank you that you tell us in your word. You said, can any man hide himself in secret places that I shall not find him? Behold, I feel heaven and I feel earth. Lord, we thank you this day that you have designed it for us to be here today. Help us, O oh God, that our mind will be centered on thee, and that whatever we do, Lord, whatever we say, it will be glorious in your sight. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. You know what? I didn't forget, but the newlyweds are back, y'all. They've been gone for three weeks. They've been to, where y'all go to Jamaica? And uh, I said, man, it's been three weeks already. But the newlyweds, the rights are back, and we praise God that you all are back. You all looking well. Your tan is good, I see. You didn't get one? You had a hat on, huh? <laughs> well, God bless y'all. Good to see y'all. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them God bless you as you leave this place. and his greatness. So when spies from Israel showed up at her house, she put her life on the line to hide them. Glory to God. When God is in the plan, you do some things and you don't even realize why you are doing it. And by the time everything is over, everything will work out for your good. God granted her another chance. When Jericho was completely destroyed, only Rahab and her family, Corey said, Completely, uh, 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 when, when, when uh, Rahab and her family uh, 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 was in Jericho and, and Jericho was completely destroyed, her family survived the destruction. Even more amazing is the fact that we find Rahab's name in the Matthew genealogy of Jesus Christ. And so, beloved, I'm here to tell you today, we know Moses got other chances too. You know, there's other people in the Bible that had other chances. I'm here to let you know today, I'm finished, that we serve a God that when we mess up, don't think, oh, my God, it's so destructive. We serve a God that will give you a chance if you let him. If you let him. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and look to the hills from which cometh your help. All of my help comes from the Lord. Amen. 
Don't think you messed up so devastatingly, just, just so devastating. Oh, God, I can't come back. Here's a good one. When Samson messed up, when he cut off all his hair, come on now, if, he, if it was y'all and God told y'all not to cut your hair off and, and you allowed Delilah to cut your hair off, come on, surely I know Samson had in his heart there's no way God will show up on, on my behalf again. But it's one thing to think on your fleshly side, but it's another thing to think, yeah, that's right, on your spiritual side. When your spiritual side kick in, you start talking to the Lord again. And Samson started talking to the Lord again. Even though they took out his eyes, he didn't know his hair was growing back. And God heard his prayer. And he got his strength back. And he killed more people blind than he did with eyes. Because God gave him another chance. God will give you another chance. Anybody, anybody ever had a job and all of a sudden the job just fell through? And y'all just fell so out of it like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I've been in that boat. You know what I did? After I did that? I like that, because that's what I did. I had to. After I wept bitterly, and I fell asleep in that office, I woke up and talked to the Lord about it. He didn't do it right away, but he did it. He did it five years later. That's grace. That's how my grace period was five years. He gave me five years to get myself together and allow things to move. So he was wondering, what you going to do while you waiting five years? So I went and got an internet radio station and got on the internet and played internet gospel 24-7. So when the local thing kicked in, all I had to do was take my computer and put it there. Turn it on. 24-7. Faith without works is dead. Let your faith do the work. Let God get the glory. Keep on allowing the Lord to use you after you repent, God will give you another chance. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I praise God for this opportunity, Lord, oh, to call in your righteous and holy name. For letting us know during this hour that it doesn't matter what we did you can take little and make much out of it no matter what we did after we, re we repent you can take a mess and make a message out of it you've done it for me you've done it for me here I was a, a wretch undone and now you're using me for your glory to tell a dying world that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father to tell a dying world that if we would confess our sins that Jesus Christ is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness have your way Lord in this place continue to grow us Lord and nurture us Continue to equip us with everything we need to win the souls for Jesus Christ. For you said in your word that he that winneth the soul is wise. Continue to use us for your glory. Bless our young people in the back, Lord. Cover and keep them even right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord, in our lives. We'll praise your name forevermore. Thank you for hearing the prayers of your people, Lord. Thank you for adding years to their lives, years to their vision, years to their destiny. In the name of Jesus, we'll praise your name forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. The church said amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place.
I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to hide some of my messages from my mother because I know she, she she'll trip if she see me tell y'all some of the stuff that I went through I'm like no mama I didn't say that But I praise God for you, beloved. There may be one that wants to make Greater Faith Christian Church your home. This opportunity is for you right now. As we continue with our worship experience, this is the best place to be, Greater Faith Christian Church. We are lovers up in here. We love you, we love God, and we love everything as it relates to Jesus Christ. Come on, brother. Come on, my brother. You got, you got, your, you got your bodyguard with you. This my. This, come on in. Come on in. Come, come on, man. Stand right here, up here, John. This my brother, John. He came. He. We feel bad for him because, because he wasn't feeling well last week. Corey told him that's all right. He ate enough for us both. I did. I did. I had to my heart. <laughs> John, tell everybody where your rhythm is. Uh, here. Born and raised? No, born in Memphis. Born in Memphis. And most of your life here. Yeah. God is good. Department of Corrections. Yeah. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. He's a God of another chance, isn't he? Yeah. You can relate. Yeah. You know I can feel you, man. <laughs> Let me, hey. you, let me tell you something about this man. He won't, but this is a mighty Come man of God right here. Come on. This man knows scripture. He prays. Hey, I'm honored to call him my brother and my friend. He yeah. won't say it, so I will. That's all right. He ain't saying it now, but I bet you'll start saying it. He keep on hanging with us. He's going to be so relaxed around us that he'll be one. Can I talk? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, oh, you feeling the brother? Oh, we know each other. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we waiting on you too, Kimya. And your wife. Y'all want to join and be a family member? Y'all, this time for y'all too. Y'all want to make it official. This time, anybody else that want to Make Greater Faith Christian Church your home. You hear? Look, see, I told you he's speaking now. He's saying, yeah. "What you say?" What you Let's say? go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Bring. Hey, you leave. Don't don't leave. Don't leave the better half. Come on up here. Yeah. Don't leave your better half. My main man. Hey, man, sister, sister, I get the chance to hug you again. Come on. What did he say? No, he did. He said you stay. No, yes, no, that's all right. Did. But no, I'm saying come here. He said stay here. I said come here. Uh-oh. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Beautiful people. And how long y'all been knowing each other? For years, huh? Thank you, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Y'all know we serve a God of another chance, right? And, uh, it's, it's, it's been kind of rough. Uh, but at the same time, us individuals, we made our mistakes. And uh, the law punishes for it. And uh, we find ourselves free now, free to do the Lord's work, and that's what we're here to do. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So, so, come on, come here. Not even productive parts of society, not even like just doing okay, like doing exceptional. Come on, got their own business owner working 105 hours a week. His boss says, let me do this for you. What can I do for you? A million-dollar boss telling him what he can do for him. Come on now. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we serve an awesome God, don't we? We serve an awesome God. We serve an awesome God. Don't you forget that. Yes, you heard me from 10 on. Yeah, I did some things I'm not, not pleased with telling you, but I always ask the Lord why I had to go through that because I get a chance to minister to those that went through that. And I say, if the Lord can get me out of it, he can get you out of it too. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I love y'all. I do. I fell in love with y'all before y'all joined, really. And uh, y'all got a good spirit about yourself. But see, I get to get to know you even more. What, what type of gift do you do? Can you sing? No. <laughs> no. Me neither. We'll find something for you to do so the Lord can, can use you for his glory, all right? Come on. As, as the pastor of this church, we welcome you with open arms. Let the Lord use y'all for his glory. Amen. Right. Come on, y'all. Let's welcome him in. Excuse me, sister. Bless you, man. Come on. Let's fellowship. Greater faith.
Amen. Amen. Come on. God is so good, isn't he? Amen. Don't forget, y'all, that God, who's rich in mercy, even when we mess up, he's right there waiting on us. Don't feel bad, because see, life is too short now to be feeling sorry for yourself. That's what the devil wants to do in these last and evil days. He's trying to trip you up and make you feel sorry for yourself. Say, oh, well, I already messed up. I might as well go on out there and do something I ain't got no business doing. No, 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 no. I want you to realize who you are and whose you are in Christ Jesus. And when you mess up, say, oh, Lord, I messed up again. But the Bible says that uh, your mercies are new every morning. He gives you a chance every day. If you mess up today, like, mm, I messed up, Lord. I thank you for the day that you have made. I messed up, Lord, but I'm sorry. Lord, give me good sleep tonight so tomorrow when I get up, I can do it all over again and do it right this time in Jesus' name. That's the mindset we got to have starting right now, okay? That's the mindset we got to have. It's time out for mess. It's time out for, for, for dis distractions. It's time, everything negative, it's time out for. That's right, just let it go. Yeah, yeah, I think about Tyrus' the son in South Korea. I told my mom about Tyrus' the son. She even started praying on the phone for your son in South Korea. See, they not just going over there to South Korea just to do drill instructions. It's time to pray. If my people, that scripture verse means something to me. You know, people, you hear it all the time, but don't nobody want to use it. If my people will, that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong in office. That's what's wrong with 45. He's not humble. You gotta humble yourself and pray and seek his face. And then. Will we hear from heaven? Then he'll heal our sick. Then he'll heal our land. Yeah, that's what we have to do. Don't forget to humble yourself first. You can't come to the Lord with all that pride because pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You know, Jesus wants you to humble yourself like Jesus did for us when he died on the cross. Amen? I digress. Mm. Let's raise our offerings. We'll be on our way home. Amen. Come on, man. Let's raise our offerings. We'll be on our way home. Glory to God. I praise God for our praise dancers. Hey, sweet. Are you awake now? She all right now because she's laughing. Jai, sir, bless you. It's a pleasure to have you come and worship with us on the day. All of our guests is here. God bless you all. Oh, your son is here. Miss Brown's son is here. Maybe she should have a birthday every day. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? You don't remember me? Oh, you remember? Cool. My main man. Good. Good to see you. Glory to God. Miss Brown's son is here. Glory to God. Yeah, God wants you too, man. That's why you're up on the front row, so you can just feel this anointing. Feel the anointing. Glory to God. Anybody need an envelope? Raise your hands quickly. Say, who played football Friday? Who the football player over there? How many touchdowns you had Friday? How many touchdowns have you had all year? Man, you had to think about it. That many, huh? I hear you good, man. I, I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to seeing you. Who you play for? Central? Okay, cool. Because we, we got a brother here. He's a, are you a junior? We got a brother here, Jacob. He's also a junior. For he, he's with Copper Canyon. So uh, we got to get y'all hooked up where um, y'all can meet. And, and, and that brother, Minister Mario, told me about an idea he had. We're going to talk about that later for these young men, too. Just want to do some programs since we got enough room. Y'all see it. As it, it, it. If it comes to life, let it come to life and check it out. But uh, hey, we got all the land. Might as well take good advantage of it, huh? Okay, ready? There you go. Let me pray right quick while y'all looking. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, for Father God, for another opportunity to give back to you that which you have given us. You said in your word, give, and it shall be given unto you good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. Will men give to our bosom? 
according to Luke 6.38. Then, Lord, you showed us how to give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for you love cheerful givers. Thank you, Lord, that there are cheerful givers in this room right now. It's because of you, Lord, we are blessed. It's because of you, Lord, we're able to give. And we thank you, Lord, for your bountiful blessings. Now, Father God, again, we, we lift up those that want to give and at this time don't have to give. We ask that you will bless them, Lord, today, that they will be a blessing to someone else. In the name of Jesus, we'll praise your name forevermore. Let them know, Lord, it was you that blessed them. In Jesus' name, we'll praise your name and glorify it forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Church said amen. 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 Father, we come before you on this hour. Thank you for this day of fellowship. Father God, we thank you for those that have given, those that had to give, and those that didn't have had the heart to give. We pray the blessings over them, oh Father God. And Lord, we continue to pray and ask you to bless us to be good stewards over what you have provided for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you all. Um, the Smiths are here. Mom and Dad Smith. The parents of Brother Brandon Smith, our, our organist, we praise God. Y'all snuck in on us again. God bless you all. And to our guests that snuck in on us this morning, bless you, brother. Tell about your name. Maurice. Maurice. And who is this? What's your name? Josiah. Jo Josiah. Josiah. We want to hear the names over here. Come on now. Josiah. And Janice. Janice. And who's the little mama? Who, little, who's the little man? I'm sorry. Lawrence. Hey, Lawrence. Are y'all in, where are you all originally from? Uh, California. Compton. California? Yeah. Okay. Compton, you say? Yeah. Oh, you're familiar with Compton, huh? Oh, yeah. Straight out of Compton, was right up your alley, right? <laughs> <laughs> you in the neighborhood? Right there, right there. Cool, cool. So, don't be a stranger, man. This is where we are. Come on, let's praise God for our guests this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Let's keep the young family continue to lift up in prayer. As soon as we get information, we'll share that information with you all regarding the home going of our son. Amen? Amen. All right, come on. Did I leave somebody out? I don't want to leave you out. Come on, let's go home. Thank you, my pastor. Good morning, everybody. Oh, my, my, my. This one's a little bit weak, but I'm going to strengthen you now by the word of God. All that the pastor has been saying this morning, it is wrapped up in one verse. St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, because God saw us so messed up, 
that there was no relationship between us and him. He has to do what is right in his sight. He took the initiative and he gave us the best gift that he had. His son, the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, when you hear the word Emmanuel, it means that God be with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something now. God in his mercy has given us the Lord Jesus Christ as a gift. God told us that if we give our life to him through Jesus Christ, we'll have eternal life. Now, here's where the robber meets the road. God has done his responsibility towards us already. Our responsibility is now. What are you going to do about it? Are we going to walk on the gifts? Please bow your heads with me. Oh Lord, the mighty God, the God of love, the God of a second chance, a thousand chances. Unto you, O oh Lord, be glory, majesty. Unto you be honor. For you, Lord, are the great I am. Lord, we thank you that you tell us in your word you said, can any man hide himself in secret places that I shall not find him? Behold, I feel heaven and I feel earth. Lord, we thank you this day that you have designed it for us to be here today. Help us, O oh God, that our mind will be centered on thee. And that whatever we do, Lord, whatever we say, it will be glorious in your sight. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. You know what? I didn't forget, but the newlyweds are back, y'all. They've been gone for three weeks. They've been to, where? y'all go to Jamaica? And uh, I said, man, it's been three weeks already. But the newlyweds, the rights are back, and we praise God that you all are back. Y'all looking well. Your tan is good, I see. You didn't get one? You had a hat on, huh? That's, that's, that's. Well, God bless y'all. Good to see y'all. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them God bless you as you leave this place.